delivers the church, there is no more rumors and lies about healing and deliverance. Do you hear me? He says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Hallelujah. And he will anoint you. But that is the morning dew. Don't use it for showbiz, Hollywood. He will take it away from you. Don't use it, oh, look at how we are anointed these days. Use it to prepare the church to purify the wedding gown. So the church may be found without spot, without stain, without blemish, without any single tainting on the gown, without any, any, anything detestable, without any defilement. Let the gown be pure, holy, radiant, righteous. Let it be worthy of the calling as the royal bride. Royal bride. Hmm? Into the king's house. You've been called as a bride into the king's house. Hmm? It's not just a regular, you know, wedding. And it's a spiritual wedding. That's why he's saying, no, you cannot be preaching the latter anointing when people are still demon possessed here. That would be a lie. They would have to be delivered. You see that? They would have to be healed. There is a lot of healing happening in the country right now. And you haven't seen yet nothing. There is more to come. I wish you could see what I have seen. But he's looking for people that will understand this scripture here. And know that the morning dew comes for the express purpose of preparing the church to enter through this door. And when you enter through this door, it closes. You see that? Well, let me share a little bit here. Finally, when John the Baptist stood here, and then the mountain glory of the Lord was in front here, and John the Baptist was beginning to talk to me about the coming of the Lamb of God that was going to come for the church, the first thing I realized is that his raiment became glorious. So glorious that you cannot even wash in any laundry on earth. No soap on earth can purify that white. Beaming like lightning. Hallelujah. And when I looked at myself, my raiment had become glorious too. My countenance, my features had changed. And I was shocked. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to mature now. You see? But, after that, it was amazing. It was tremendously amazing to me that the glory that came before the Lamb was released from the mighty glory where the Father was, before finally the lamp came, the glory that came out turned my clothes to be radiant and His. Hmm? I was so amazed. There was no single spot you could hide. Not knowing that that is what Isaiah saw. Isaiah said, he said, hallelujah, let me jump ahead of myself. Verse 22, and he says down there, the earth will disclose the blood shed on her and she will no longer hide her slain. Which means you will never hide any sin again. Amen. Hallelujah. When that glory comes, no sin can be hidden again. Don't use it for running around. It is for revealing the sin in the church. Purge it off. Cleanse the church. Prepare the church. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not for, oh, the glory has come. We like the church's meetings. When we go, the Holy Spirit comes and slays thousands of people. Cripples walk. What? People are healed. What? We love. Don't do that. That is the gospel of the flesh you see the evangelists are doing all over the world. That glory is for connecting the church to the kingdom of God. All these works he will do. But for the one and single purpose of preparing the church 
for the kingdom of God. And how do you prepare? When that comes, it unearths sin. You understand? Isaiah said, no more will the earth hide the blood shed upon her. Hmm? Which means the evil that you ever did to the remnant church, the evil that was ever done to those who have chosen holiness will be exposed. Hallelujah. And he also says, even her slain will not, will, will not be hidden. They will be disclosed. She cannot hide anymore. Any longer. That also talks about God will hold the earth to judgment on the day of rapture. Because the day of rapture, he divides the earth into two populations. The raptured and the remained. And if you remain, he says, it will be so difficult. You cannot even preach Christ. Because the Antichrist, uh, oh, I have seen a lot. I have seen the earth after the rapture. And the Lord says, when you try to preach Christ, you will be beheaded. And if you refuse to wear his mark, God says he himself will send a spirit to confuse you to believe him. That means you want to enter the rapture. You want to make sure you are in the rapture. Don't fool around the rapture. That's why I wondered, why are the evangelists on earth not preaching the rapture? It was shocking to me. Why are they not preach? Why are they not preparing the church? This is the most important message they should use to prepare the church. The earth will never ever hide her sin as that glory comes. And that's what Isaiah saw. But let me tell you something interesting. Because down there, in verse 20, he says, Go, comma, my people, comma. You see that? You see that? He's highlighting my people. My people. Do you see that? That his people, for them, they should now go inside through this door and then close the doors behind themselves. The rapture door that I'm talking about today. So make sure, hallelujah, make sure that the rapture door closes you on the inside heaven part side. You are closed on the inside of heaven, that side of inside heaven. Do you understand me? Listen to this. I, I, there are two scriptures I want to handle here. I want to go to Zechariah 13 very briefly. So you may understand what he means by my people. Zechariah 13. You see that? The my people he talks about. You see? Verses 7 to verse 9, Zechariah 13. Why does he highlight, Go, comma, my people, comma, and enter your rooms and shut the door behind you. Why does he emphasize my people? He puts a comma before and a comma after to bring it out. Listen to this. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. He says, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn my hand against the little ones. Verse 8, now he's beginning to define what he means by my people. When God says my people, he says, In the whole land, declares the Lord, Two-thirds will be struck down and perish, yet one-third will be left in it. Do you hear me? Two-thirds will be struck down and perish, one-third will be left. You see already he has pulled out one-third. He's talking about a remnant. Hallelujah. Look at what he does with one-third. He says, This third I'll bring into the fire and refine them like silver and test them like gold they will call on my name and I'll answer them. I will say, they are my people. You see my people there? And they will say, the Lord, he is our God. So that means, when God said my people, defining the true identity of the rapture church, he meant the remnant that will step out, hallelujah, they will say, just a moment, there has to be an end to this joke in the church. Do you understand? There has to be an end to this comedy in the church. There has to be an end to this sexual sin and the love of money in this church. 